Well, today's International Day of the Boy Child, a day founded in 2018 to put emphasis on recognizing the importance of the well-being of young boys and their role in their communities and families. Unfortunately, men are frequently at the center of abuse, crime and violence in society, and this is exactly what this day aims to address. The theme for this year is boys and mental health, and it also addresses depression and teen suicide rates, which continue to rise. For more on this, I'm joined by Prime Star's COO, Nkosinati Moshoana, and Ronald Guni, a young man who has achieved the Top Achiever Award in South Africa for Cambridge IGCSE Combined Science. Um, I mean, uh, that achievement is very, very well deserved for you. Um, please tell us more about that, Ronald, and, and what this means for you before I get to you, Nkosinati. Um. Well, the achievement is a lot, I, I, I can say. Uh, I, I definitely didn't expect to to win it, of course. So I'm just grateful that I, that I, I was able to get such a high achievement and able to surprise myself after all the hard work. Is maybe to say that, yeah, now it actually paid off. Mm. And yeah, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that all the hard work that I put into last year, especially thanks to the people that I I studied with and my teacher, Mam Sama. Because of them, uh, they have the big contribution to this great achievement that I've gotten. Mm. So, yeah. You know, you must have had some challenges, you know, um, for you to be able to, to reach such great success. Um, what would you say was some of those challenges, if you had any? Um, being honest, I think it's, it's sleepless nights. Uh, I think for combined science, I put, I put that subject on a pedestal compared to others. So our way I'd work a hundred percent for this, I'd work a hundred and ten percent for combined science. Wow. So I think it's just more, you know, I'll, I'll, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Mm. It's, I don't think there's any other way. Mm. Basically, you know, putting aside the friends and the PlayStation and just focusing on the work, is, is that what you're saying? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Now, of course, in Kosinati, you embarked on such a great program. The, um, it's called Inter um, uh, uh, SA Boys Mental Health. And, we, of course, we are focusing on the emotional well-being of boys, especially. And like I mentioned earlier, suicide statistics continue to rise at an alarming rate. I know you did a study of boys between the ages of 13 and 20, boys like, of course, um, Ronald himself. Um, how important is it for South African young men to to make their mental health a priority? Well, today we had the pleasure of uh, celebrating International Day of the Boy Child, and uh, congratulations to Ronald. I think he is a fantastic example of the kind of good young men we're looking to create in the country. But the day was celebrated on our part as part of a national initiative that we created titled What About the Boys? We've been in the youth development space for 18 years and did a lot of work uh, through programs like Take Your Girl Child to Work Day. But then we found that young men are misguided, are looking for support, and are lost for role models and mentors. So in this program, we then decided it's time that we redefine masculinity, help boys identify their identity, break free uh, from these stereotypes that say that they cannot be vulnerable, and help them on their journey from boyhood to manhood, to raise a nation of good men. Hmm. I know something like the COVID-19 pandemic also played a huge um, role when it comes to, you know, um, the mental health status of many young people and, and you know, people in general. Um, but what are some of the findings here, where, what, where, what you discovered when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic and mental health? So when we ran the program last year, we had over 15,000 boys engaged from township, rural, and urban communities with the objective of addressing uh, the support for boys, but the long-term objective of actually stopping GBV by raising a nation of good men. And in the time of COVID, you would have seen that the numbers uh, for GBV accelerated incredibly. 
What we saw with our cohort of boys before the program when we did pre-assessments is that up to 80% of the boys, due to the challenges of emotional and mental instability, were dependent on alcohol and drug abuse before the program began. But six months later, after the initiative, we saw some positive shifts to less than 15% of the boys being dependent on those abuses, but we continue to support them through mentorship in the program. We also saw that because of the challenges they face in looking to become traditional men or what you call real men, but because they lack role models, because South Africa has been dubbed a fatherless nation, and even in the COVID pandemic, we had fathers that were absent from the homes, we are seeing our boys still struggling with the notion of what it means to be a good man. Boys are struggling with their emotional regulations. They are struggling with the challenges of poverty in a country like ours. And before the initiative, we actually had up to 50% of the boys talking about how they've either been witnesses or victims of GBV. Mm. So the initiative and then the stats we're following is really about how do we get involved? How do we get fathers and men back into the picture to mentor young men in mm. order to support them on their journey to manhood mm. and positive masculinity? And of course, it's also very important for, you know, um, guys like Ronald himself, you know, being a learner that's achieving, you know, such so many great things um, to play, in, his, in, his, in essence, a role model to his peers as well. Ronald, do you feel like it is important for, for you and others like you to play a role mo model for your peers? And if you would also like to add how the COVID-19 pandemic maybe also put some challenges in front of you yourself and how you dealt with that mentally? Um, yeah, uh, I think being in the, in the conversation of being alone, I think it, yeah, it's important for, like, just for us to follow the, the rule that we don't all achieve, we don't achieve alone, that all of the people, all our peers, all of those we hang around with, all our friends, we all achieve together. And I think that it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be able to inspire others. And talking about the, how COVID-19 affected me, I, I think it's just the same thing as everyone, just putting everyone's world, including mine, on a hold because now we don't know what to do. And it's just now what is bringing up questions like, oh, what do we do from here? And I think this that was one of the wake up call, one of my wake up calls to the, uh, making me which brought me to you know, brought me to realize that now I should start working harder because you never you you'll never know what will happen in the near future. Same way that COVID came so unexpectedly. So yeah. Mm. Um Interesting, you, you mentioned GBV in Kosinati, and I want to come back to that. Um, you've had boys from over 100 schools in all nine provinces, you know, participating in this initiative of yours. Um, it's, this, this percentage um, really scares me. 30% of the boys said it's okay for a man to hit his girlfriend or wife if she won't have sex with him. You know, th these are some of the... the crazy findings that, that scares me when I see, uh, you know, percentages like these. What are some of the other shocking findings and, and how, do we, how do we deal with this? You know, what, what also adds to, to that scary statistic is that the boys that we worked with were as young as 14 um, in that perception. So what is, has also been scary is that as much as the boys are perpetrators, we're also finding that many of them are silently victims to gender-based violence. Um, in the research we found in our program, up to 20% of the 15,000 boys we worked with have been victims to GBV, but silently and not reporting. On the other side of the coin, when you look at the number of boys, up to 35% of them in one way, shape or form have been perpetrators um, of a non-consent or of some sort of sexual harassment to young girls because in their mindset, there's something, they've not done anything wrong. So in the What About the Boys program, the key has been the mentorship element, but also a national movement behind supporting boys. Our boys are lost, they are misguided, they are angry, and they are looking for support. 
they are defining themselves or rather taking what one defines to be a man uh, the wrong way. So we are looking at redefining masculinity, introducing a positive masculinity, and we've ran a national campaign today, in fact, really driving the message around the country, getting behind redefining masculinity, raising a nation of good men, and helping boys understand that being a good man is mm. the key. And it is imperative for men um, to come out and be role models to our boys, join us in this movement. Um, and for young men like Ronald, we want to see more and more and more Ronalds in the country so that we have less perpetrators in the future than we have in our past. Mm. Uh, and Kosinati, I feel like this is a program that should be rolled out in every school in the country. Um, how do we make this a reality? Do you need more assistance from government, maybe corporate South Africa? Absolutely. Thank you for that platform. The message is quite clear. We need South Africa to join us in raising a nation of good men. We had 100 schools last year with 15,000 boys. We already have over 1,000 schools on the waiting list saying we need our boys to get the support. We need the private sector. We need the public sector through government. We need more media platforms like yours to get behind the initiative, invest financially, but also invest time to be present with us in supporting our boys. It is only once men and boys become allies to women and girls that we can truly stop gender-based violence and raise a nation of good men. Our boys are not bad. They are just misguided and lost, and it's time that we get involved. Mm. Um, and lastly, Ronald, um, I mean, once again, congratulations on this amazing award. A hard work indeed, that is what you are. Um, but now I need to ask you, of course, seeing that it is science that you won this award in, uh, is that the future for Ronald, science? Um, well, not specifically science per se, but I'm, I'm looking more into uh, computers in the near future. Uh, I was... I, should be told that I only chose combined science because I was afraid of the, the pure sciences. So, and with, with grace that the, the, the science I chose, not the subject that I chose, the, ch the subject chose me as well. So, uh, no, not really going, I'm not really going into science in the near future, but more onto computers and just to see where they can take me. Fantastic. Well, good luck with your journey, and I'm sure you'll make a great success of it. Thank you so much. That was Prime Star CEO Owen Kosinati, Moshawana, and of course Ronald Guni, who achieved the Top Achiever Award for Combined Science in South Africa.